Now it's recording. It says recording, but it has a little camera with a little no sign. How did you mm. How did you first hear about WikiLeaks? The first time we heard about WikiLeaks was maybe like 2005. We got an email from this guy Julian Assange who was telling us about this website idea of his, and he was calling it WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks? WikiLeaks? Leaks urine. I, I couldn't imagine it catching on. WikiLeaks today let the world in on still more U.S. government secrets. 92,000 official U.S. documents. Assange says he's aiming for full disclosure on every major issue in the world. The Defense Department demands that WikiLeaks return immediately all versions of documents. So a few years go by and Julian Assange emails again. He says, come visit me. I'm under house arrest in the English countryside. And well, this is an opportunity that we just, we can't r r resist. Coffee. And I got our friend some uh, carrot cake, look. Where are we? Uh, we're in uh, Bungay and we're on our way to visit Julian Assange. Do you mean the WikiLeaks guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the WikiLeaks guy, public enemy number one. The US just hated Assange. He had just made public millions of secret documents, which just made a mockery of US security. He needs to be prosecuted to the full, fullest extent of the law, and if that becomes a problem, we need to change the law. There were people, real, real senators, threatening his life. Julian Assange is engaged in terrorism. He should be treated as an enemy combatant. We got special ops forces. I mean, a, a dead man can't leak stuff. But strangely, that's not why he was being, he was under house arrest. So the other thing that I, I initially purchased was called Sweet Tarts. And it had a picture of two beautiful blonde, uh, kind of Swedish looking girls. <laughs> I'll take this instead. <laughs> At the same time as Julian Assange was being accused of all sorts of crimes in the U.S., Interpol had put out a warrant for his arrest in Sweden. Today, a series of legal moves may have set the stage for his arrest, and not for spilling state secrets, but on allegations of rape and sexual assault in Sweden. Assange's supporters say Sweden's rape prosecution is motivated in part by the documents release, and they also say his safety is in danger. Officials say Assange surrendered to British police. His lawyers have said that they will fight extradition from Britain to Sweden. You know, it seemed kind of weird, but if Julian Assange had gone to Sweden, there is a very good chance that he would then be on a plane to the United States where he would end up either in jail forever or quite possibly even executed. So this is the entranceway, right? This is how we get to the countryside villa where Julian Assange is under house arrest. This is a big country estate that a war journalist had loaned. But the weird thing is that he was under house arrest with a family, with young kids, who didn't expect him to be there for over a year. I have been detained in this house for the past 273 days without charge, um, awaiting extradition to Sweden and possibly the United States. Wow. So do you have an ankle bracelet or something? Yeah. Is it? I've never seen one. <laughs> Two hundred and five. All right. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to work out how to do a vaudeville sort of act with it. You know, given the importance of WikiLeaks and how much attention he'd gotten, you know, I expected some big, like, wizard kind of guy, you know, like, I am in charge of the universe. But he's actually just a guy with a website. This is just the, the most amazing cultural artifact, modern cultural artifact I have ever seen. When you're under house arrest on a beautiful estate, outside of London, you also find some time for some other activities. Ah, my stomach. I have a bad case of diarrhea. <laughs> I have a bad case of diarrhea. I have a bad case of diarrhea. I have a
I have to say, like, you know, Julian Assange has like really opened my eyes at a lot of things. But he's also got a very strange sense of humor, which I share. The chickens are kind of interesting, actually, because they're free-range chickens. They have a huge field, and the sides of the huts are open, but they're all in the huts all the time. <coughs> they never take advantage of their freedom to move more than five meters from these things. Oh, weird. It's almost like they're taunting you when, when you don't have the freedom. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to be public enemy number one? You get, you get used to it. This is an electric fence, by the way. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just don't pee on it. Yeah. It must be amazing to just publish these things and see these immense effects, like an entire anti-corruption movement in yeah. India. Or, I mean, some people have said that the Tunisian revolution was stimulated by the yeah. Tunisian cables, and that people yeah. were thinking, like, wow, this is, this is revolution. They're changing, the, getting rid of this tyranny. Can we do it here? It's a hard road. Modern Western countries, a change in politics doesn't change who owns what and who controls what. They are out of view, they are on contracts of various sorts. But by publishing so many secrets at such volume, we were able to speak to such a strong degree that even though the West is heavily fiscalised, we were able to influence the relationships of who controls what. WikiLeaks didn't just expose a bunch of cables, it actually changed an entire culture of hackers. Like for years we would say, why are all these hackers so apolitical? Why? Exactly. I knew that if only we could shift them, yeah. then it would be something magical. Well, we've pretty much lost our light, but you can always put on night shot. You never know who's creeping up on you in the night. <laughs> I don't want to make you any more paranoid than you probably have to be already, though. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> Rolling again. So, it was, you know, so we got a sense of, of these people. We got a sense of Julian and, and what he was like. But there was one thing I, I, I still didn't understand. You know, how could it be that just a few people with a website could threaten the entire, the most powerful institutions on earth? Like, aren't the ruling powers ready for a website? It became clear when, thanks to WikiLeaks and the anonymous hackers, we found ourselves being spied on by some of the most incompetent people on this planet. Our white-haired friend in, in London got millions of emails from Strat4, an intelligence agency for private companies. And among them were a ton of emails monitoring the Yes Men. I'm George Friedman, founder and CEO of Stratfor. As most of you know, Stratfor was attacked by hackers. We don't know who the attackers are. The term anonymous is the same as the term unknown. Thank you for visiting Stratfor.com. Due to the high volume of interest in our new website, we are currently <laughs> encountering a service interruption. <laughs> As in most affairs like this, those who know don't talk, those who talk don't know. Stratfor has a mix of covert and overt informants, which include government employees, embassy staff, and journalists around the world. God, they're really going to upset a lot of people with this. <laughs> this is so cool. There are 4,000 emails mentioning WikiLeaks or Julian Assange. There's only 52 mentioning the Yes Men. Shit. They needed somebody to go look at these emails in person. I was in New York, but Mike was in Scotland. I'm walking along with my daughter, and I get this call. Would you fancy a trip to the English countryside? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, Andy? You know, the countryside, go to the country. Oh, the English countryside. This has to be about Assange. Do you know where are yet? Okay. It's complicated. This is the second cab. 
So Stratfor had been hired by Dow Chemical to spy on us because of an announcement we made as them in 2004. <laughs> Wait a second. Today is a great day for all of us at Dow and I think for millions of people around the world as well. The world's worst industrial accident is being remembered in India today. Deadly gas leaked from the Union Carbide chemical plant in the city of Bhopal. We have resolved to liquidate Union Carbide, this nightmare for the world and this headache for Dow, and use the $12 billion to adequately compensate the victim. Well, the prank which briefly knocked 3% off Dow shares comes 20 years to the day after the chemical leak from the Union Carbide plant in Bhopal. So while I was writing the press release, Mike was on his way. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes. Hi, hey. Okay, so, what are we doing here? That's what it's going to look like. This is our sort of front page. <sighs> <laughs> Stratfor are basically imposters. They don't call themselves a spy agency. They say that they are publishers. We are what we said we are, a publishing organization focused on geopolitics. Our goal is to objectively acquire, organize, analyze, and distribute information to our subscribers. But among the five million emails that Anonymous hacked was a list of secret sensitive information for the eyes of private clients only. Ooh! Oh my god. These are creepy people! Oh my god! Here's a quote. One email from the CEO, Friedman, says, you have to take financial, sexual, or psychological control of him. And he's writing um, to an employee on how to exploit an Israeli intelligence informant who's providing information on Chavez's cancer. So these are the people that they're hiring to monitor us. About those emails, God knows what 100 employees writing endless emails might say that is embarrassing, stupid, or subject to misinterpretation. But the hackers will not find intelligence from corporations and governments or signs of a vast conspiracy. I feel very lucky right now. Like, being in the middle of a spy story, it's like a childhood dream sort of thing. Not mine, but I was more wanting to be an astronaut, but this is pretty good. But one really interesting thing about all this is that you realize, wow, these companies do consider us and the Bhopal activists a viable threat. It worries them enough to hire private spies. And so that really does give you a feeling that you need to keep going. The forces of darkness are extremely well funded and well coordinated. On the other hand, not very well motivated. So they don't work that hard, they move slowly. Like Julian said, you know, the forces of darkness, they're just doing it for a buck. The people who want to change things, they start websites called WikiLeaks. <laughs> People, individuals, do make a difference. WikiLeaks is a, is a great inspirational example. You know, it's like a simple project from which this incredible complexity emerged and changed everything. 